So today, I'm going to finish off this African print dress that I started in a previous video, but then my mum came round and rudely interrupted us, so I had to stop. Now, in that video, I showed you how to do this really easy. It's so easy. This easy placket that you can then add buttonholes to. Now, the pattern that I used for this African print dress is um, a raglan sleeve sort of block, pattern block, that I have on my Etsy page, Stitches TV. Now, it's a really simple raglan sleeve pattern and, and I'm always adapting it and making other things like bomber jackets, vintage scarf tops, loads of stuff. Now for the dress today, the way in which I've adapted it is I've made it longer but also I've done this to the sleeve pattern. So usually the sleeve pattern has a dart in the shoulder so that falls like that on the shoulder. But what I've done is I've folded the pattern. So if you can see, I've folded the pattern, I've added a little bit extra, tilted the pattern out so I get more fullness there. So that, hopefully anyway, it becomes, oh, that's a bit noisy, gathered at the top and then I can put Elastic in the bottom and hopefully that will be a nice little puff sleeve. I know you're going to be really annoyed with me <laughs> because um, I also, um, I measured, uh, where are we? I measured the, would it be the circumference of uh, the neck, okay. And using that measurement, roughly, um, I made a, a collar, okay? So that collar is going to go down, whoops, like that. Okay, well, I don't think there's anything else I need to tell you, but hey, that might change. <laughs> so, shall we begin? Well, if you are beginning from scratch, you probably need to go and watch the video of um, how to do a really easy placket opening. And then when you've done that, come back. So remember, my raglan sleeve pattern doesn't have a front or a back, so that applies to the sleeves as well, cause just to make it easy for you. And because it's not fitted, it's absolutely fine. But what we do do, as you see when I do the placket in the placket video, the placket opening, we do shape our front. And we might even need to shape the whole lot afterwards a little bit as well. In order to make facings, um, I traced out the shape of my front and cut one of those and then cut it down the middle. And then I also traced out a facing of my back and using the original pattern, so the original pattern, okay, I put it to a fold like this, put it to a fold of the fabric and then went like that and cut out my facing for the, the shoulder bit. But the first thing that we need to do is, so I've got one of my sleeves here and I'm going to put it right sides together with my fabric, stitch them together. So I'm going to do that onto both of my fronts, just using a straight stitch. I just wanted to show you this. So when you do stitch up those um, armhole bits, the raglan sleeve, you must line up your notches, ignore the end of your um, sleeve because as you would have seen in the previous video, we shaped our front to make it lower. So obviously that's going to be lower as well, but just leave it for now, all right? It's fine, just leave it for now. 
So I've lined everything up, all my notches. I'm gonna go forwards and backwards. That's to close off the seam. And I'm gonna use, oh, hopefully my head's not in the way. I'm gonna use a large centimeter or a small half inch seam allowance. And the size of my straight stitch is, I need to have a look, mm, sort of between two and a half and three. All right, I'm coming round the bend now. And then back some forwards at the end. And then do your other side. So the other raglan sleeve on the back as well. So that was easy, wasn't it? Should we have a look? Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to put a pin a real pin on my placket opening because it keeps opening up. Okay, let's give it a good shake. Whoa, that's really nice. So this is what we've got so far. Just feel a bit like a nighty, but hopefully it won't look like that when it's done. But you do have to try it on at this stage because you need to see how much gathering you want to do up here. Even though your facing will be a guide because that was to the original measurements, um, now's the time to have a look. So I've pinched, I think about an inch, that's two inches there. So look, I've marked where the centre of my sleeve is by matching up the sleeves and... So I've put a little centre notch there because I want to know where the centre of the shoulder is. I've also put a little notch. Do you remember I pinched it on my shoulder? So that sort of tells me that I've got that much in total that can be gathered into nothing, but I'll spread it all around. Now, do that on the other side as well. But now is your time also for shaping that bit of sleeve there, because you remember our front had been, um, our front neck had been shaped, but not our sleeve, so now we can do that. So. So gathering, for those of you that don't know about gathering, you, well in this situation anyway, because it's simple, we just make it the biggest stitch on our sewing machine. So I've made that four, it's a straight stitch. We mustn't go backwards and forwards because we need to be able to pull the thread and ease the fabric. So I've started about two centimetres away from the edge of, look, this is my sleeve. Okay, and I'm just going to come around using my big stitch, same distance away from the edge, and stop, same distance away from the other edge of the raglan sleeve. And then, what happens is, give yourself quite a long thread. If you pull one of the threads, not both of the threads, but one of the threads, so I'm going to pull the under thread, look, I've only got one, then you can cause the fabric to gather. Isn't that great? So I know I've got two inches overall, which is kind of four or five centimetres to play with there. So when you're happy with it, that's it, that's gathering. Okay, so we've got a little bit of tidying up to do. I can see that that's a pretty weird shape, so I'm just gonna roughly Tidy that up a bit and then do exactly the same on the other side. Because we did actually reshape our dress front a little bit. And whilst I'm here, I may as well round those off a little bit. Hopefully. See, look, I've got notches there that show the, the centre of the uh, shoulder seam. Okay, so hopefully, when this goes on to here, on to here, it will all fit, okay? 
So let's see how it does fit. But remember, these bits, we're going to have to sort of gather them up to, to fit our facing. Okay, <laughs> so I've got my dress the right way round and I've got my facing, okay, which I know you can't see, but you will in a minute when I zoom in. Um, I've got my facing right sides together with that. Now on our placket, where we've got the bit that, you know, folds back, I want you to open out that bit. And you've got to align the raglan sleeve seam and then see how it falls coming back that way. Now, I've got an announcement. We are going to use pins. Yes, pins. Because like I always say, pins are overused, but when you need to use them, you need to use them. So come and have a look at my pins. Now, the reason why I'm doing this at the moment is not because I'm about to stitch it on, but I'm trying to understand how much gathering I need here. And it's determined by how big that facing is. So once I've pinned that raglan sleeve seam at the front, I then need to pin the raglan sleeve seam at the back. Now, in doing that, I can see how much excess I have of this stuff here. I think I've guessed it quite well actually. <laughs> Look, I even have a pin cushion. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a pin in here and however amount, you know, however I'm happy with the um, amount of gathering, I'm going to wind it around that pin so it doesn't come undone. Right, and I do the same on the other side here as well. Once it perfectly, perfectly fits my facing, then it's safe for me to put a pin just in that, the sleeve part, okay? And wind it around. Spread out my gathers nice and evenly. Now when I take it off, so I'm taking off the facing now, right? I'm gonna take off that facing I know that if I stay stitch this, it's going to be the right size. So I'm going to do that now. So it's with like a number two and a half, three size of stitch. Don't make sure that they don't come off those pins there. And you're going to sew straight across your gathers and then that way it won't stretch any bigger. Right, now I did have to go in and double check it against the facing, okay? It didn't happen first time, so don't be worried if you have to go and check it again. So now we're gonna do the collar. Now I know you're gonna say to me, well, how are we gonna cut out the collar? We haven't got a pattern. Well, it looks like that. And that measurement there is the bit that is the measurement of around your neck, minus about an inch, because it doesn't completely touch at the front. And I know you're still going to say, well, how are we going to do that? So what I did was I've traced it out just in case um, you want it. And I can always email this to you, but that's all that it is. It's a bit boring. But if you want it, if you comment and tell me, and then I'll give you my email, and then you can email me and I'll email it to you. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course it does. Right. So, I've got a confession to make, oh sorry, I couldn't help adding a bit of piping around the edge of the collar, but it is easy, you just use a zipper foot and what you've got to remember is snip your piping before it goes to the curve so that when it goes around the curves it can sort of stretch like that. Right, so we're going to make up the collar by putting both our collar pieces, because we cut two of them to a fold, okay? And they'll be exactly the same size. In this situation, they'll be exactly the same size. So I'm just going to stitch them together like that. But do you know what? I will give myself a few notches. And because I've put the piping in, I have to use a zipper foot but you will just use a regular foot. 
So stitch those two pieces together. Now I can recommend having a notch in the middle, okay, of the edge that you're sewing, because you're sewing around that outer curved edge, and start there, go around, and then start on the other side and go around using a straight stitch. Okay, actually my piping is quite squashy, so I'm using a regular foot and a regular stitch, lining up my notches, started at the centre back notch, and then just sew. I suppose it's oops, half a centimetre away from the edge. I mean, really, I should be using a zipper. Foot. Okay, of course, because I had piping, it was rubbish with a, a regular sewing foot, so I did have to use the zipper foot. Now, you need to cut it very close to your stitching, but not too close, and go all the way round. Now, if you have cut it close enough, you don't need to snip in, okay? But otherwise, you should snip into your curves. Wherever you've got a curve, you sort of snip in. Right, so that's our collar with my sneaky bit of piping in there, which I think looks all right. So now we're ready to put the collar onto the dress. When I'm attaching the collar onto the dress, I'm starting at the centre back of the dress and I'm lining the centre back of the collar with the dress. And I'll put a pin in there, don't I? <laughs> I put a pin in there. I'm going to undo the placket front because I've got a pin in the front as well. Cool, we're going for it pins, aren't we? And I basically, from the back, start feeding my way around to the front and I just have a little look at where it finishes. Now, that folded back placket facing, I want you to open it out, all right? You've got to open it out. So sew from the centre back and come to the front and then stop. Have a look at it and then see how your other side lines up and then sew that one. Position. Right, so I've lined up my centre back. Now the seam allowance that you do has to be more than um, your gathers there, so remember that. So using a straight stitch, you can always go in and over sew it. Using a, a straight stitch, making sure the flat bits are flat and the seams are pushing towards the back. Come around with your collar. Take your time. until you get to where you want to be at the front, okay? Now, open out this placket. This is the one that was folded back, and I don't want it folded back. I want it opened out, because then I'm going to go like that, and it will become part of the facing, even though I have a facing. So I'm going to come round. Look, coming round. Okay. And it finishes wherever it finishes. And then do the same on the other side, but when you do the other side, you're gonna be that way round. But check where it finishes first, and for the other side, you're going to stop somewhere around there, and this placket sticks out. Now, we've got all this excess fabric here. That's the, the placket opening, all right? And we've got all this excess seam allowance, but we're not going to trim it back yet because we're going to stitch our facing on now. So do you remember how we did it before where we lined up our raglan sleeve seams, pushed our seams towards the back, lined up our notches. So we're going to do the same thing. But what I'd say is now this placket that falls underneath. Yeah, so this is the one that falls underneath at the back. You do need to fold back your placket, okay? And you're gonna lay your facing on top in line with everything. You need to stitch it up there and then 
you're going to come all the way around the neck with the same seam allowance as you did on the back. But I'm going to pin it in place first. Okay, this is important. So you've gone all the way around and you've pinned it all, lined up all your raglan sleeve bits. Now on the part of the placket that forms the front, yeah, where it's usually folded back, okay, I want you to do this. I think this is right. Um, you're going to first of all fold it back, okay, then you're going to lay your facing on top and then pin it into place. Now I'm pinning on the underside because then I can see all the stitching and I can stitch in the same place. So I'm pinning it on the other side. I'm making sure really, really that it is all lined up properly and I will be stitching up there first. Right, so the place that I'm starting is right here. Ouch, God, I hate pins. Okay, so I'm gonna come up that facing at the front. So, so I'm at the centre front at the moment and wherever I see a stitch line, I'm going to sew exactly in the same stitch line whilst making sure everything is flat. <laughs> so, take your pins out as you go. I know you can't see the stitch line, but it's down here. So I'm following exactly the same as I see on my dress. So I'm just going all the way around. So I'm now at the centre back. So I just keep going until I get to the centre front again. I just want to show you this side of the placket. Okay, so I'm going to pull that over. That becomes like that. And then you've got the facing behind there. And that's that overlappy bit. Pretty good. So look, that's the front. Okay. And if you want to have a look at the back, and that is the back. So all you have to do is just stitch up the side seams and then hem the bottom. show you how to do a buttonhole and this is on a, a genome machine. Right, the first thing that you do, you've got to get your buttonhole attachment out and put a button in this button holder thing at the back. See how it slides up and down. So look, I've put my button in there and I've made sure that it's firm. Now I'm going to press the release on my foot and I'm going to align, lift up this and align my buttonhole foot to go. Now I don't know if you're supposed to do this but I always like to put my thread inside the hole. So we're nearly ready to go. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to turn it to buttonhole on our machine. So that's where my buttonhole thing is. So I turn the wheel until it goes to buttonhole. And then it shows me the different sizes of uh, tension and zigzagginess and where my size of stitch should be. So I've got to push my size of stitch to the buttonhole area, which is in there. My zigzagginess can go anywhere between four and six so let's put it at about five and then my tension can be any of those now I would never do a buttonhole directly onto my garment I'd always test it out first and I'd always do this now before you begin there's a little thing on your machine that you need to uh, where is it somewhere here we pull down this sort of stopper there's like a stopper thing there can you see that this sort of stopper thing. So we put that there and then the machine knows when to stop and make sure it's come right down 
okay now the next really important thing is using a bit of tear away stabiliser stuff is a good idea now you're going to put your buttonhole foot to the front of wherever you want your uh, buttonhole to be and then you just put your foot on the pedal and in theory it does your buttonhole. Do you know what a really important thing is? You have to re, um, you know, take, you have to turn the wheel, turn it to another stitch and turn it back to buttonhole again so that it can put itself back to the beginning. If you don't do that, it doesn't seem to work properly. So you've lined up where you want all your buttonholes to, to be. So you've got them in position and then you just do exactly the same thing but do practice first don't think that you can get away without practicing because you really can't right we've run out of time but i have put the buttons on look can you see those buttons in there so where are they i've put the buttons on uh, what else have I done? I've started putting bias binding on the sleeve here. So I still don't know how I'm going to finish it. But however I finish it, I'll definitely show you pictures at the end. So here it is. Now I know it looks a bit different, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I made the collar a bit shorter because I, th I thought as a Peter Pan collar I felt like I was wearing a nighty. And then for the sleeves I added some bias binding and then I did this. I got a massive needle and I threaded it double with some shearing elastic and then I put that needle backwards through the channel of the bias binding and I kept feeding it through and feeding it through until I got back to the beginning again and then I sort of forced it made a sort of hole through the bias binding going backwards with that that massive needle and then I ruched up the fabric to however much puff I wanted, tied it in like a double double knot, <laughs> cut off the ends and then forced that knot back through and sort of eased the fabric around it so you couldn't see the knot and it looks like that which I really like. So I'm going to do that thing now of putting it on. Now I've been on a bit of a journey <laughs> I've been on a bit of a journey with this one and if I was honest I'd say I've kind of lost my sojo sewing mojo thing for a moment there but then it was quickly regained when I changed the collar and did the puff sleeves now I'm still not finished with it I still let me stand back hopefully you can see it all I'm still not completely happy with how it looks and I need to make a few decisions about it. I love the sleeves, I like the sleeves, I like the back, in fact I'd probably like to wear it back to front. I like the stand up collar now, happy with that, didn't like the Peter Pan collar at all, looked like an IT, <laughs> um, but I do feel like I need to keep all of the fabric, the political statement and these circles down there. But I don't know, I don't know, it's just, I need to do something. So, should I make it shorter 
hopefully you can see that, to about there and do like a great big frill, like a tear, a kind of silver rope belt. Look, I'm doing that pose that I do. I was thinking of embedding some sort of little silver rope belt. I can't decide. So will you comment below and tell me what you think I should do? And don't say put it in the bin. Thank you so much for watching Stitchless TV. Oh, I've got something really important to tell you. Got to come closer. We have reached 60,000 subscribers. Yeah. So what that means is we're going to be doing that thing where you look inside my drawers. Not those sort of drawers. My haberdashery drawers. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching and see you again very soon, hopefully next Friday.